Well, first of all, you have to understand, Bob and I were high school sweethearts. So we went I way back. I saw you dancing outside when I came in. I knew there was something yeah. here that went back a ways. Well, I had a problem uh, that I couldn't stop looking at uh, pornography. Uh, I was exposed to pornography at the age of six. I found pornography in my father's uh, uh, sock drawer. And uh, my initial exposure to pornography, the way it impacted me was uh, that uh, I, I remember in my heart feeling that I felt good about looking at it. There was some excitement going on there yes. that I didn't understand and uh, that I felt guilty. And I didn't understand that either. Time. Both at the same time, absolutely. And so what that meant was is that I was coming back because I felt good and mm -hmm. I was sneaking because I felt guilty. Mm -hmm. The reality of having that in my life is what drove me to Christ in the first place. And when I first came to Christ, I experienced a great amount of victory. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I remember, though, I was in the military, and I remember around six months uh, after I became a Christian that I, I saw some pornography, and I acted out, and I remember being devastated by that. Mm. I remember thinking, I thought this was done. I th it hit me like you it's back. You thought once you became a Christian, you were delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I felt like it's back, and it didn't go away like I was hoping. I was hoping that that's what I would get out of the deal, coming to Christ, that this would go away, and it just it devastated me. But... God uh, really impressed on my heart that I couldn't wait for my good works to kick in to get back with him. You know what I mean? I, I couldn't pray and say, I'll get back to you next week after I uh, do a week of devotions or a week of evangelism. I needed to know his forgiveness and his mercy right then and there. How did you reach uh, the, the, the bottom as yeah. is sometimes used in, in addictions yeah. of any yeah. kind? Well, what happened is that Marilyn and I, I felt we were going to head, we were heading for divorce. I thought that our marriage was, I, th I looked at it like a train wreck going, it was a train going into a wall, and I couldn't stop it. I didn't know how to stop it. He was my high school sweetheart. and um, Right was, here in Philadelphia. Right here in Philadelphia, Roxburgh High School, okay. concert choir, you okay. know, we sang uh, together. And what um, happened in our relationship, I didn't know what happened in our relationship. Um, we went from Bob getting saved, us getting married, having children, everything being, you know, kind of going along, wonderful, normal. normal, normal, normal. And life took over, you know, I went out to work to put the kids into Christian school and Bob continued to work and the coming home every night and the, you know, the busyness of lives. And what happened that I could see is our kids became teenagers, that Bob became more distant with them and I felt like, oh my goodness, as a mom at that age, what they need is their dad. Well, I had a weekend where I was in my shower crying out to the Lord. Just like I would look up and say, God, it's Marilyn. It's not supposed to look this way in a Christian family. God, uh, through that confession, directed us to... Um, we, we decided to go to counseling, and we went to a um, little conference by a counselor who specialized in sexual issues. And so the Lord worked that out, and Marilyn and I went to it, and this fella started his uh, presentation with his testimony. And when I sat there and heard somebody explaining in public in in front of a bunch of people, how he struggled with pornography. Uh, I just never heard anything like that before. And I was just, my mind was blown, and I was just crying my eyes out because I just couldn't believe it. Would you tell me we can change? Hmm. Yes, you can change. <laughs> no matter how uh, old I am? Yeah, or absolutely, how young I am. because it's God who grants repentance. Hmm. And when your heart is softened to the gospel, there's change. Mm -hmm. You know, you can change on the outside. You can change all your little yeah. patterns and, oh, yeah. I'm not going to walk there. I'm not going to go here. I'm not going to buy that book. But until the heart changes, you won't change. Mm -hmm. And only Jesus can change your heart. Mm -hmm. And not only can he change your heart if you're addicted to porn, but he can change your heart if you're addicted to your self-righteousness, mm -hmm. which is what which is... I found out later that... <laughs> In my you mean life. the Lord had to deal with you too in this well, whole Well, I didn't think so because when we went to counseling, 
we were there because of Bob's problem. So we go to counseling and Bob sits there crying and I just thought, good, this is what he needs to do because I've been crying for the past how sure. many years? Sure. Good for him, he's finally crying. I'm pretty, I'm pretty good here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then one day the counselor says Turned to and me at you, Marilyn. and said, um, you could actually repent of being a good girl. Now, he said that, and I'm telling you, it took me months, even years, to fully understand what he was saying because I was a good girl. Mm -hmm. You know, I read my Bible every day. I prayed. I had the devotions. Mm -hmm. I was doing what you're supposed to do as a Christian. So of all people who needed to get fixed, I didn't. He did, you know. Marilyn, that's pitiful. That's a pitiful Christian life. And that's when my heart, you know, I finally started. I didn't want to cry, but the tears started coming, and I just was like, oh, what are you thinking? That is pitiful. I tell people to come to Jesus so they will have a joyful Christian life, walking with the Lord. In abundance. But I was going to sacrifice all that and just put up with Bob and then die and go to heaven. Mm -hmm.